So um, my work uh, took a turn in 2010. Uh, before that, I was doing silkscreen posters. And my silk screens either uh, pointed uh, out injustices or uh, celebrated community events. Uh, but in 2010, I started to do three-dimensional sculpture. And uh, I settled in 2012 uh, on a form that uh, I have uh, pursued to this day, and that's the form of the mandala. So uh, mandala means circle, and uh, it has become a great medium for me to um, galvanize community, uh, focus uh, around a, cer uh, a central issue, or um, uh, just having different little pieces that make up a whole universe. And so um, I found that this was a great way to tell stories, affirm identity, or educate about history, um, celebrate cultural traditions, and also preserve memory. Um, and because it's a circle, and because it's made of many little pieces, I can include a lot of things, and also include the community in actually making these pieces, so that we all have a collective uh, input into this piece and through it um, find some healing for ourselves. So this is this called the t soul of San Francisco. It's 12 foot feet round and it's, they're floor mandalas and they're made of very tiny little pieces. And so for this one, I wanted to um, show what I feel is the heart of San Francisco before it all disappears, because San Francisco, as you know, is changing rapidly. And so in it are photographs of uh, neighborhoods and, and um, storefronts that uh, have uh, either changed or are still there but may change. Um, and also uh, the diversity that I feel is rapidly disappearing. So that was one way to um, preserve memory and also to add some delight. You know, what was delightful about San Francisco? Ramen noodles and sponge cakes are in there and as well as a lot of other things. And I, uh, I engaged um, people in the senior centers uh, to help me with these pieces and also uh, some young children from school. And that's a trademark that I, I also do. Um, this one uh, I did for Oakland Museum uh, for their Day of the Dead, and it's literally about preserving and memorializing a loss. And, um, but I have a about 90 people in this mandala, people I know, people I don't know. I ask the community to send me names and sometimes photos, uh, because I wanted everyone to see that death happens to everybody. And through that realization, we're um, in some way comforted because we share this common grief uh, over this uh, inevitable um, uh, fate that we will all have. So um, there are, um, of course, pictures, but there are also items there that show how other cultures commemorate and, and um, honor their dead, um, from Obon dancers to uh, Balinese um, baskets to you know, uh, you know, butterflies and skulls and stuff like that. And I also have a playful element here too where the skeletons come back to earth and haunt the places that they used to go to. Um, and that's a detail of that. So this one is the one, um, I'm not keeping track of time, but this one I wanted to focus more on. This is called uh, um, Japantown Mandala, and it's part of a larger um, production called Sweet Japan. 
sweet J Town, and it was commissioned by First Voice, which is Brenda Wang Aoki and Mark Isu. And, and it was a multidisciplinary event where we took over a storefront in Japantown, and um, I have the mandala. There's an interactive pagoda that um, accompanies it. They're multidisciplinary um, music, dance, and um, uh, a panel discussion, and um, a, a lot of community activity. So here you can see some of the, the items in it. We um, use everything from a, a lot of resources from the neighborhood. We had um, Niamachi Little Friends, li these little preschoolers. They made the gingerbread people. And we have uh, photos that pointed out the 100-year history of the Japanese in America, including the internment camp. It's all in there in the inner rows. And then we made fun stuff like sushi and um, you know, little items that are pertaining to the culture because Japantown is in danger of being lost due to gentrification and redevelopment. And there are only three Japan's towns left in America, so it's very important to um, point out the, the significance of this particular neighborhood and this particular culture, and it, most importantly, the history, so that we don't repeat it. Um, seniors helped me with the outer rows, um, two senior centers there. Everything in the neighborhood, including the mall where our storefront was held, um, everything is in there. there uh, it was a big gallery, so we had, um, you could see the mandala, but we, there was also room to do a panel discussion on the relationship with Western Edition because it was not a separate community before Gary Boulevard divided the neighborhoods. And um, we had young people doing hip hop and, and um, you know, it was important uh, to engage the young people so they could carry on this telling of history. And uh, in fact, the project um, commissioned eight interns called JTELs, and they were commissioned to learn about Japanese history, and they will be the ones to tell it in the future. So this is just uh, to give you a glimpse of um, uh, the breadth of this particular project and how I feel like it really captures what we're talking about here how to pass on the memory, how to memorialize it, and how to um, galvanize a community so that they can save a neighborhood or at least preserve its culture. Thank you. <laughs>